And we finally reached the final part of this major unit review and here is Springs and it's honestly probably one of the shortest videos I'll ever make in this entire physics curriculum, but hey, it deserves its own section. And so we covered the two main topics, Hooke's Law and Spring Potential Energy, because these are two of the main things you need to know about springs. And from here, it'll probably lead into other big things, and I'll explain how. And so we start with Hooke's Law, and it's all about the force in a spring. This is the equation for Hooke's Law. Okay, where Fs stands for the force in a spring. So the force applied to a spring is directly proportional to the compression or extension of a spring, which is X. So this here is Fs, and this here is X. Now what is K? K equals the spring constant. And that is in the units of newtons per meter. Okay, so it tells you how many newtons you need of force, how many newtons of force you need to stretch or compress the spring by one meter. Okay, so springs with high spring constants are tougher. They're, you need a lot of force. And so the higher the spring constant, the stronger the spring. Versus something with a low spring constant, they're easier to compress and extend because you only need a little force. Okay, and so Hooke's Law essentially tells us there's a linear relationship between force and the extension and compression. So when we graph this, force and x, we should expect a linear relationship, and the slope of that line gives us the spring constant. So the higher the slope, the stronger the spring. The lower the slope, the weaker the spring. So higher slopes equals higher spring constants, okay? And so sometimes when you have a spring that's oriented vertically, and there's a mass attached to the bottom of it, the force in the spring is pointed upward, and it's equal and opposite to the weight of the object pulling it downward. Okay, so when solving Hooke's Law problems, the force on a spring is equal to the weight of the mass that's pulling it down or compressing it down. Okay, and then this leads us into spring potential energy. Sometimes there could be problems where you need to use both spring force and spring potential energy equations. Okay, and so solving for one, pro solving for one variable in one of the equations will help you find what you need in the other equation. And this particular energy, PES, as standing for springs, is equal to one-half kx squared. So this is the stored potential energy in a spring. And there's a quadratic relationship between extension and compression. Because if we look at this equation, x is squared. Unlike the Hooke's Law equation, it's no exponent. There's no exponent, so it's just linear. But here, it's a quadratic because x is squared. So the more you extend it, the potential energy increases exponentially. And here you could also use spring potential energy in the conservation of energy law. So if we think about an object resting on top of a spring. So you compress the spring and you release it, the object is going to be launched upward. So if we think about it, spring potential energy transforms into kinetic energy of the object, which then becomes the potential energy of the object once it reaches rest at the top of its movement. So if you push an object down onto a spring, the spring gains energy, it's stored, it releases it, becomes the object's kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy as it's going upward changes to potential energy. So we can have something like this be seen in these types of scenarios, okay? And that's the end of this spring's video. As I promised, this is probably one of the shortest videos I've ever done, under 10 minutes. And stay tuned for the practice exam coming up soon.